Okay, hi fellow Grumps, I'm back for uh, another video to talk about the two films that Ian has selected for me to watch in this uh, anti-Ryan Shadowway marathon project. So let me let me get started here. Um, first, Ian chose two films for me. One is uh, Total Recall, the Schwarzenegger version, which I had never seen before. And he also chose No Country for Old Men which I had seen before, had this sitting on the shelf, uh, had to buy this, uh, tell a story about that later, but let me start out talking about this, because I watched this one uh, first, uh, just watched this last night, Total Recall. Uh, I like the story, and I like the acting, especially by, especially by Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's very impressive. Uh, in this movie he, he has a lot of heart and shows a lot of vulnerability and besides all the Arnold stuff so in that in that respect I appreciate it and I like the story uh, I pro probably now I couldn't tell you any details about what happened but but it was it was very involving this guy that he thought he was someone else he found out that he wasn't I mean it's just very it was based on a based on a novel by Philip Philip K Dick who wrote another book that I read last year, um, a, a Scanner Darkly. I, I read that, I liked it, liked it very much. And that's the only thing I've read by by that author. But um, anyway, there were, a lot, there were a lot of good things in here. And the special effects, for the most part, were, well, they got to the point where they were a little bit overwhelming, but nothing new there. That's the era we live in. So... You simply can't ignore the um, the violence in this movie, and I know you guys are. I know you all disagree with me. You're sick of hearing me talk about violence and graphic violence, and all this stuff. You and you just don't want to hear it. And I don't know what else I can say, but that it just to me it just dominated the whole proceedings. It just made it. Uh, let, let's it just made it a contest. Let's see how. Let's see how graphic and bloody we can make this next scene look. Let's let's show the, uh, why I just don't get it, and I never will, and it's never going to be something that I that I celebrate in the way that so many other people do, and I realize that that sets me way apart from all of you in this group, and practically everybody else in the universe, and that's fine, but I simply can't, I just can't overlook it. I just can't, and uh, you know, even though there were some good things in the story, and it it uh, had some good acting and all that sort of thing, uh, to me it was just another celebration of violence. I guess I was reading about this, and I guess for a while it was it was going to be rated X because of the because of the graphic violence, and maybe I got that wrong. I was reading something about it on Wikipedia, but uh, I don't know what the remake is like, but I'm sure I'll never see it. Um, so, so here's the story about this particular Blu-ray. Now, I didn't own this film, and I didn't want to watch it online on a 17-inch computer screen, so I wanted to be able to appreciate it when I saw it. So I, I went online, and I found this on eBay. It was, it was a, the most inexpensive Blu-ray that I could find, and they said that it was a brand-new, sealed-up copy, right? So sent away for it and it came rather quickly now when I put this in to my my blu-ray player when the credits started to roll at the beginning of the film the uh, blu-ray started freezing and it would just freeze sort of momentarily and then start again that happened many many times just while the credits were rolling and I thought oh great here we go and I was ready to take it out and wash it because that's the only thing I know how to do is to wash these things and dry them off very well and try to get them to to uh, move properly well so after the credits rolled the film played almost two-thirds of the way through without any problem but then it started to freeze up and it finally just stopped and I can't remember exactly the scene they were already uh, they were on Mars and, and some of the the uh, climactic things were about to start happening and so I took it out and I washed it and dried it and uh, this has no extra features including scene selections so I had to I had to uh, start the film again and just fast forward to the next to the place where I had stopped 
but it started happening again. It, it kept freezing and it finally just stopped altogether. So I gave up, came downstairs to my computer room and I looked for this online and some place where I might be able to rent it. Couldn't find anything except one place to buy it. So I, I went ahead and did that. So, so I bought this twice, but I, I watched the rest of the movie on the computer. And, and the good thing that comes out of this is I actually found it um, to be a positive experience to watch a movie on a computer. So now I'm ready to consider the uh, streaming option again. Uh, so thanks Ian, I, I appreciate that. Uh, let, me get a, let me get to the next movie, No Country for Old Men. I watched this a couple years ago. Um, I didn't see it at the show. And I didn't like it very much. I didn't like the story. I certainly didn't like the, you know, endless shots of people getting shot in the head at close range. I mean, wow, what an adventure. What what an accomplishment for the Coen brothers. I get to see these two guys, you know, just, wow, how, how can we put in one more scene of guys getting shot right through the head. How close can we get? How realistic can we make it? How exciting and entertaining that's going to be for everybody who watches it. Yeah, right. Um, I There was nothing about this story and any of the characters, really, that made me care about what was happening and where it was all going. Even though I like the actors, I like Tommy Lee Jones, I like Josh Brolin, um, Woody Harrelson, Javier Bardem, I've seen him in other things and I like him, but in this movie, he was he was a dead spot. He was a blank wall. He was a cipher. And I guess in some interesting stories, well-written stories and contexts, that could be an interesting and cool thing to kind of character to have in a film. But in this one, nah. He was just a killing machine. He was robotic. He said ridiculous things to people that he was about to kill. Um, I, I, as I said, I liked the actors. Some of the things I liked about this, some of the cinematography was very good. I liked a lot of the dialogue and the exchange between some of the characters like Josh Brolin and his wife, uh, Tommy Lee Jones and, and his, uh, fellow policeman whose name escapes me. Some of the other dialogue between some of the, the people in offices and stores that were confronted by, you know, like clerks at hotels and, and just people who look like they were real people, hand, they probably were handpicked for this film to uh, reflect that culture that they were in. So I, I thought those were kind of cool. But overall, no, I didn't like it the second time that I watched it and I, I'll never watch it again. So I just, uh, I will say one thing. Now I know I go on and on about violence, but the, the one scene near the beginning where where Josh Brolin's character was uh, running from these guys who were shooting at him, and they they sent a dog after the guy. So the dog chases Josh Brolin into the river. Josh Brolin is trying to get away from this damn dog, and the dog is paddling. And he finally gets onto the shore. The dog is running toward him. This dog is not going to give up. And he manages to get his gun put together right at the very last second. Shoots the dog in the face. <laughs> I have to admit. Now, that was an exciting moment. I have to admit. Not, I, I, I'm sure that no dogs actually suffered and died just for the uh, sake of this movie. But uh, that was... I remember that from the first time I watched it. That was a very exciting moment. So I'll, I'll give him that. I'll give him that scene. But... Overall, no, nah, I see no reason for this to be made. And I've seen several other films by the Coen brothers, and I've liked them all. I like their quirky sense of humor. They write interesting stories that go in all kinds of twists and turns. I, I didn't see any of that here. All I saw was just, just uh, one-note characters and a robotic serial killer who went around shooting people in the face. I, that's it. So... Anyway, thanks for letting me watch this again. I probably I probably wouldn't have otherwise. I always said that I was going to watch this a second time to see if my opinion would change a little bit, and it didn't. I probably would not have done this, Ian, if you would not challenge me to watch it. So anyway, those are my speeches about these two films. And so I will try to uh, get films for um, Jay, Bob, and Harry. I know I've been very lax in getting, getting all this started. I have films from uh, Bob and yeah Bob and Jay 
And so anyway, I'll try to get I'll try to get going on the rest of it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think.